life doesn't always give you the time you want to play video games, especially if you're a dad. So when you beep and your wife doesn't give you the death stare, you can finally play Halo. And no, I'm not talking infinite. I'm actually talking about the original trilogy. If you're a kid, you get maybe one or two consoles to game on. And for me, it was Sony and Nintendo. I I completely missed out on the Xbox when I was a kid. But when the Xbox Series X goes on sale for three fifty on Black Friday, and they totally missed the pre- and to be honest, they totally missed the chance to price it at, at three sixty. But you know, the electric bill and the diapers can kind of wait at that point. It's, it's time to dive in on the Xbox for the first time. That's because most first time Halo players played back in two thousand and one. This guy right here, he only played Halo in his 30s. So this is not a review of someone who has played the original Halo trilogy. This is what it's like to live with someone. Nope, that's girlfriend reviews. This is an opinion from a dad who is playing Halo for the first time in his 30s. And also whose first Halo experience is the Master Chief Collection. There are definitely really cool things. There are some really frustrating things. And there are are really just straight up some weird things. When you're used to games that you can play on like any console, like Warzone or Apex or Destiny or something, and you go back to Halo controls, they are uh, a little bit different than than someone might be used to who's used to those games. I have no memory of this place. There are things you can get used to. There are things you might need to build up a little bit of mem- muscle memory for. And then there are things that are just clunky. <laughs> The things you can get used to are things like there's there's no sliding, like sliding into your DMs. There's no running, and there's just one speed for everything. So when you're running away from a horde of flood, your pretty much best option at, at, at when they're shooting at you is either to move side to side or to jump. And another thing you can get used to pretty quickly is the fact that there there is a crouch, there is crouch in this game, but you're not going to be crouching and moving at all. It's, uh, there's, 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 no, there's no tea being served here, if you know what I mean. Then there's the things that you definitely need to build muscle memory for, and this is kind of funny. So I'm used to reloading with X or Box, but 20 years ago they had different ideas for what should be assigned to that button. You don't reload with X, you reload with R1 instead. In fact, X is used for a flashlight that you definitely use, but only for like 5-10% to 10% of the game. One of the biggest things that you definitely have to unlearn if you're a first-time Halo player in 2024 is L2 is not aim. It throws it throws your grenades. So if you're like me, you need to develop a discipline not to throw grenades out, especially near a wall, and completely screw up your process. And then there is the straight-up clunky. The flying controls are tolerable, but... The driving controls are practice, practice, practice. Like, these are, I mean, goodness. I swear, Master Chief does not want to escape from aliens, especially in the first one. I'm glad I played this in the winter, spring, and summer months because there's a lot of fall damage here that goes hard in these games. And as I was finishing up the last level in the first game, I'm expecting this to be, like, epic. And, And it is... It's like Master Chief drank an entire bottle of Jack before the mission. Jump, 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 jump! And then he carried on driving, and it boy does this really show. You drive over these ramps, and instead of being an epic cheese fest over there, like it's designed to be, the Warthog, more often than not, really flips over, and it's super annoying, <laughs> um, especially when you're on time with, with getting out of there. What they could have done is take a cue from any racing gamer in that period and say R2, accelerate, L2, reverse, left stick, steer, uh, A is the e-brake. Instead, the instead the left thumbstick pressed forward is go. The right, the right thumbstick is steer. And you can get used to this, but it definitely makes for some very funny moments. A lot of what I'm saying here does sound negative, but I really mean it in more of a funny way than anything. I I got a lot of laughs out of this out of this experience. I it could have maybe gone for for more epicness, but at least it provided some well-timed humor. 
There are a lot of weapons in Halo, and a lot of them are really cool. The standard machine gun is okay. It's it kind of is more equipped with nerf bullets more than anything. I mean, how how many bullets does these aliens take? The shotgun is one of the best guns in the game. You're very limited on ammo, but I mean, it, it'll get you out. It'll it'll blast some aliens out of the way in a pinch. The needler is a very cool gun, albeit it is a delayed gratification gun. You definitely need to fire a lot of bullets, but it, it and it has delayed results. But it is a cool. It is probably one of the most unique weapons to Halo in, in particular. Like, you can get a shotgun in Call of Duty or Apex and stuff. I mean, you're not going to get a needler in any other game. There is a really cool gun that looks like an airplane, and it comes in two different flavors, grape and cherry. Cherry is amazing, and that comes in, that came, comes in games two and three. It also tastes great, and it's probably my it's probably my favorite gun in the entire game, to be honest. Then, in Halo 2, you have the most epic sounding moonraker laser that i've ever heard in an in a game before i mean just li just listen to this Halo 3 introduces a machine gun that I'm a little bummed out that I couldn't stab anyone with it as soon as I ran out of ammo. Do we even dual wield any shooters anymore? Halo 2 introduces the dual wield, which it isn't just cheesy, it's actually super useful. Bungie knew that you struggled to load the gun while being chased by the flood in the first one, so they made a way for you to keep shooting with your second gun while reloading your, your original gun. The story of Halo is, is definitely a mix of campaign and gameplay. I mean, first and foremost, it is a multiplayer-focused game first, and it is a top-notch game at that. It's one of the few multiplayer game. It's one of the few multiplayer games where I really don't mind continuing to play, even though I'm pretty trash at it. The only other game I really enjoy on that level is Super Smash Bros. You get the first game, and the story in there is pretty basic. You investigate the Covenant, you kill the Covenant, you, the Flood break out, and they become the real enemy. Thanks, thanks, 343 three, three, Guilty Spark. Hey, isn't that the name of the developers for 4, 5, and 6? Halo 2 revamps the cutscenes like crazy. The cutscenes on 2 are on a whole nother level. I consider myself... I consider myself super blessed to play for the first time with these updated graphics. I mean, boy, does it feel like I'm watching a movie here. I mean, how beautiful is this is this entire... You can't even tell that it's 20 years old. Instead of just shooting a bunch of Covenant and Flood, these guys now have meaning besides inserting bullets into their face. The, the Arbiter has to be one of my favorite characters, and, and Keith David plays him to absolute perfection here. In fact... I'm going to go so far as to say in the second one, I really enjoyed the Arbiter storyline more than Master Chief himself. And that's that's saying something. Master Chief is definitely there in the second one, but the Ar the Arbiter's redemption story is is way more worth rooting for and is way more interesting to me than Master Chief's. Of course, Master Chief's actions in the first game is is what caused the this whole story to set in motion. The Arbiter is on death row for not stopping Master Chief blowing up the first Halo. Meanwhile, there is a heretic going around trying to frame the Arbiter for, for his own nefarious goals. And then there is Gravemind. When you encounter Gravemind, he is like crazy scary. When you look at IMDB and you research the cast, you'll be surprised to know that this Big alien, like sinister alien voice, is the same guy who voices all the clone troopers in the Clone Wars. The only weird issue I had with Halo 2, everything was perfect in the game, and then the ending was just BAM, super abrupt. It's probably it's probably worse than the Sopranos. After Master Chief says it's time to finish the fight, they apparently give you a Marvel style end credit scene leading into the third one, but with Cortana joining the grave mine for some reason. But you don't know it's the post credit scene because the the credits don't really roll at all. It's kind of like end scene, skip, and then this extra scene. And I didn't even realize it had ended. I thought there was going to be some sort of lead and it just kind of ends. What's odd about Halo 3 is Halo 1 started off with a with a pretty basic story, cool. 2 re, like 
completely revamped all the cutscenes, and I and it, and it was and it, it was extremely epic. And then the three story kind of felt a little bit like an afterthought when compared with the gameplay. The story really doesn't kick in until halfway in. It definitely ties things up, but I could have done with more cutscenes and more lore about the game. You team up with the Arbor after being enemies with him in the last one. You help him get his revenge. You put a stop to the stupid flood once and for all. And you rescue Cortana. I almost had a heart attack when the when the last mission and number three had a very similar t- last mission to the one to the one in the first game. Luckily, Master Chief sobered up in this one and could drive the Warthog without bouncing around too much and without flipping it over too much. I did it one shot. But despite being a little bit underwhelmed by number three, I still had a very good time with it. So does Halo hold up today? We may, we may be all grown up and not having LAN parties today, but Halo absolutely holds up. Even for, ju- even for just sh- shooting these little guys here. I used to say that if I ever got an Xbox, I would buy Halo, and that would be what I completely focused on. It was kind of one of my life goals to play the original Halo trilogy, and now that dream is fulfilled. Halo is almost everything that I believed it would be, and if you're a first-time Halo player playing in 2024, definitely get this. I mean, you have the Master Chief Collection, which includes Halo Reach, the original Halo Remastered, the original Halo 2 Remastered, Halo 3, Halo ODST, and Halo 4. So you got six games for, I mean, for as little as $10. I mean, that's that's how much I bought it for. It is digital, so I mean, if I mean, if you can find a physical copy out there, go for it. I mean, it's probably going to be a little bit harder to find, but the Microsoft Store, either, either buy it on the Microsoft Store for $10, or, I mean, it's also on Game Pass. It's I mean, you're not... Halo's not leaving Game Pass anytime soon. Personally, I I enjoy buying that so I can kind of come back to it whenever. A lot of games I play, I don't plan on coming back to, so it's kind of like hit or miss whether Game Pass is 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 good or not. But but this is definitely a game worth coming back to over and over again. Right now, I'm finishing Halo Three ODST. I've completed. 10 out of the 11 missions and I'm almost done with it that after that going back to Halo Reach and playing in release order then I'm going to be hopping into the second trilogy so is this worth the price of an Xbox let me know let me know if you thought the hype was real in the comment section below what game do you think I should do next I'm also mid Jedi Survivor and to me it's one of the best story it's it's one of the best Star Wars stories out there I honestly like it better than the first one, and I thought the first one was ne- nearly perfect, and I haven't even finished the second one yet. Yeah, it's a little buggy and stuff, but I mean, anyway, I digress. Happy gaming, and I'll see you in the next one.